got a special guest today. You and Melendez just played a couple of songs from one from two of your artists. You, who, who, who you just who did we just listen to, bro? Oh, bro, y'all just heard Band of Gotti, uh, Corner of the Club, and Kyrie Thirty Six Hundred, Miss Elsie vibes, man. Two two of the youngins that uh we we have on the roster. That uh, actually we've been working with them for for a little while now, man. Both of them are twenty two years old, man. So youngins from the area. One I'm from Hampton, and the other one uh from Suffolk. Sheesh, uh, they're 22 years old. I feel yeah, old as shit. Um, what what <laughs> kind of I and one one thing about you that I've always known is you've kind of always been around, even with all the other experiences that you have done in Virginia and specifically in the 757 area, you've always kind of been around like the music scene as well. You've always been kind of around the emerging artists. What made you want to change over into consulting and not only that, just management at this point? Um, bro, honestly, um, I think that. I, I kind of was doing it um, accidentally, I guess, at first, if you will. Like, it was one of those things where kind of uh, some years ago, a few of the homies, like, I actually grew up with, um, they were rapping. And I was just always the guy that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very structured. I'm very, like, business-oriented. So they might, you know, bring your record and say, what do you think? And so our other friends might just be like, oh, it's good or it's bad. But I would always be like, uh, well, it's this or is that this is why um but if you do this is how we can market it this is what we should do for a video this is what we should do for artwork i've always been that kind of that guy anyways you know what i'm saying um so i guess as i just got older um i kind of realized that the area um the musicians around here you know a lot of them didn't have management at all um or any guidance or anybody to do that for them uh, so we create with a perfect play. Uh, we pretty much that that was our whole angle, you know, really, really focusing on artist development. You know what I'm saying? Under, uh, teaching the artists and helping them understand what it's like to go to a real studio session, what it's like to prepare for an interview, why it's important to have a, a real team, why it's important to do visuals a certain way, why it's important to have artwork, why it's important to credit your producers. Um, all of those things like that, um, that, that was really, that's a big, a big focus for us. And with that, you know, we're, we're kind of doing the thing. Um, I guess you could say like almost like a Rockefeller type of situation where we're, we're, we have create with perfect play, but we're also building our artists to have their offshoots as they continue to develop and progress in their careers also. That's, that's dope. I mean, what, what, what have you learned the most out of all of, out of this whole situation? I mean, Cause like managing artists isn't easy. And and I know Josh can speak to this, but like trying to do that in a small market is even harder. I would say like it's probably it feels impossible it, it, it sometimes, right? One hundred percent, bro. Um, sometimes it definitely feels impossible, bro. Just being real, uh, there's a lot of uh, like look looking at things. There there's not like I said before, like kind of like the resources, if you will, man. There's not as many. Um, I guess, investors, or there's not as many examples, if you will, because if you think about it, like, think about what I just said, the, the artists that just were played, they're 22 years old, right? And the, the biggest, I guess, the, the biggest artist, if you will, from here, um, that everybody thinks of is, is who? Push, Pharrell, um, Missy, you know, that sort of thing. These, these kids weren't even really alive when they were, you know, kind of, doing their thing of course you know they all know they know about push because push is kind of having a second run right now mm -hmm. but they even still it's more of a thing where they kind of look at him as like you know the, the old head is doing his thing but it's not really like a, a clear uh template for them to be able to say okay this is how he got on this is x y and z you know so we try to be that that bridge if you will because we kind of did see push and we do um pay attention to what's going on and how and how they kind of made it and also pay attention to how other artists are doing things and try to mix that into a melting pot and try to make it make sense uh coming from a small market but a lot of that also is you know we do a lot of traveling also to kind of uh do do press outside of just va um we do you know some press in atlanta new york those sort of things also to help um get them more so out there if you will Right. And, and I, I think like, again, going along with, with those, like, I won't even say the struggles, but definitely challenges. Um, what have you, what have you seen that's like different when you go somewhere else when, when they, when they manage your artists? Cause I, I know a big thing was, um, you know, back in the day when, you know, I would help people out there or, you know, I would be involved with certain things. Like, 
they would be like, you go to Atlanta, they'd be like, yo, they really like support their own. Like they really fuck with their own. Like, is that, is that bro, something that's the that, biggest thing, right? <laughs> is that, that's, yeah. that's the biggest, <laughs> that's the biggest thing. No lie, bro. It's like, it's the biggest thing is just the support, man. It's like here, um, it's one of those things where it's a lot of education being done. You know what I'm saying? So, um, obviously it makes things a lot more difficult just being real. It's a lot, it's a lot of tough days, just being honest, you know, but, um, cause you got to think we're almost educating, uh, we almost got to educate the listener and the fan even on how to listen and how to support properly. You know what I'm saying? Like right. a lot of times here, man, a lot of people still want our artists sometimes to send them the, the raw file so they can have it in their notes and play it in the car. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> We're just trying to get them. We're trying to get them to even understand, like, bro, like you are hurting your homie by, by, you know, not our artists, but getting the their their friends or whomever to understand, like, you're hurting this artist that you fuck with by doing that. You need to, you got to stream their music. You got to have Spotify or since we're um, amp actually Amazon Music. You know what I'm saying? You got to have these things. So you can support these guys and support their career, you know what I'm saying? Getting them to understand. Obviously, coming to shows isn't really a hard thing to get people to do um, because, you know, a lot of times here, people kind of look at that as like, there's not that much going on anyways, if you will. So when people go out, if it's a show, it's even better because it's like a party and a show at the same time, you know? Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's a lot of education, you know? Um, and then and our artists, you know what I'm saying? Just continuing to develop them and, and how to interact with their fans um and how to just interact with other artists you know uh working together you know what i'm saying uh whether it be uh collaborating on on records together whether it be just you know popping out to to video shoots with other artists and making cameos um you know that whole thing man just trying to continue to build that 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 real community the right way you feel me other question um what's, what's your favorite part about the management process Bro, my, my favorite part about the management process, um, honestly, Josh, is, is just um, I think I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to impact young. Uh, right now, we only have young men on our roster, but we're going to add some young women soon also. But to just be able to impact them and, and give them the, the real the real game, the real way. Um, without all the fluff, because as y'all know, a lot of a lot of guys, a lot of people out here right now, man, they take advantage of a young kid with talent. You know what I'm saying? So with us, we really, you know, we educate them on the business too. So I I, I love the educating part because, as J Five said earlier, you know, I'm one that loves to learn. I, I watch a ton of interviews. I pay attention. I read a lot of books. Um, so I can, you know, teach what's taught, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I think that's that's the thing I. I enjoy the most is the fact that I'm able to, you know, sit down with my artists and talk to them like, hey, you know what, like being that this artist got on this record with you, this is how you have to do these splits, you know what I'm saying? Because X, Y, and Z, you know, talk to them about publishing and distribution and, and deals and all that. And we're very, you know what I'm saying, very, being very transparent with our artists, man. That's the, that's the thing that I enjoy the most is being able to educate them. I feel like not too often people are like actually educating artists and giving them like the business of music. I think a lot of it, especially on the management side, is like a lot of creative work and like a lot of just like, hey, like I can make your videos look better. I can help with your artwork. But I think that that education of the business and like what's really going on behind the scenes is, is sorely missing. So love to hear that you, you know, that's what you're working on and just like pushing forward. Absolutely. Yeah, bro. And I, on my back. No, no, no. I was, I was just going to say like one one thing that's like, kind of underrated in what you're doing is that like again we come from a smaller place so there's not that much learn there's not that many learnings there there aren't that many like huge artists that come from our city on a yearly basis like new york or atlanta or la you know what i mean like it, yeah 100 and people can get lost in the sauce in, in in terms of just like not knowing how the game is now you know what i mean and, and i and i think that it's super like amazing to hear that that you're that you're again trying to teach what's taught and and I think that's really dope. One hundred percent, bro. And um, like you said, man, it, it is definitely one of those things where um, it isn't like you know bigger cities where you know, like I said, you they can literally look at somebody maybe two years or that popped last summer. They can say, okay, this is how they did it, so I can follow this kind of template. You know, what I'm saying that we don't have that, man. So 
one of those things where, you know, you, you, you learn and you just pay attention. And um, we did have the opportunity to work with uh, Pusha T's label um, early on, Airwave Music Group. We had the opportunity to work with them on the creative side. And once again, man, um, just like I am, my team is also, you know, paying attention to how things are, you know, with the label starting out, um, how, how he kind of talked to his artists, you know, how he kind of handled things with his artists. And then even just conversations with Push, bro, like, very insightful stuff you know what i'm saying just learning from him and, and, and thinking about different things things in a different way you know um that's definitely played a huge role in how we how we do things also has right. being on the other end of the business also affected your own like fandom with the artists that you love like i can imagine going on twitter and seeing the 10 or 20 different arguments a day about numbers and artists and what people are selling and how it's affecting billboard. I can see that now seeing the other end of the business just being like, okay, maybe I don't need to jump into these conversations or dive into these things that people don't have too much detail on anymore. Um, I would say, I mean, I definitely, uh, I think for me, bro, I think looking, I, I pay, I pay attention to things a lot more in detail now, you know what I'm saying? I pay attention to things, in regards to, uh, let me see how to explain it. Obviously, a, as a manager and, and knowing the, and knowing what we're trying to build, I pay attention to what's going on outside, so I don't vocalize everything as I would if I wasn't a manager. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but numbers wise, it's tough because I'm, I'm glad you brought the numbers thing, and this might be a little offshoot, but like the numbers thing. It's tough because I realized that obviously we all know like it's a numbers game right now and, and it's a lot about numbers, but I try to hear it's one of those things where I'm trying to get people to understand, especially coming from this smaller market, like J5 was saying, is that the numbers will come if you have the foundation, you know what I'm saying? So really just trying to I don't know how to explain it, but like just build the foundation and then just keep building on that and letting the numbers come, if you will, when they come, because they will come if you have the proper foundation to build upon. You know what I'm saying? No, you're right. You're right. I think I think one thing that that and this is in any place where there isn't really an infrastructure like that, people want to get, you know, they want to do a million views, you know, first week without having that structure. Like, right. Yeah. Like it's, it's like they don't understand that part of the game. So those conversations get different. They might become more annoying when it's, when it's like, you know, I've had to tell people before, like even f from there, like, listen, like stop worrying about all of that. Worry about what you got Bro. going right here and then try and build yourself up to that because we don't have that. We, we can't just go sit right next to Travis Scott and be like, all right, let me go to your show with you. And you, you know, just me being seen gets me, you know what I'm saying? 1500 followers. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. We, Bro. We, just, we just don't and have even, that. Um, and even not to cut you off, bro, but even worse, man, which is a, another big thing, you know, where, where we're we're trying to break that trend, if you will, like coming from smaller markets, there's a lot of a lot of these kids, they'll they'll try to like pay, you know, pay to play type business in 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 regards to like pay for views or pay for streams and X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, we try to explain to them, you know, where um it's a thing like, yo, like understand that if if somebody does spot you because they say, oh, you have a, mu a million views on YouTube, X, Y, and Z, if you don't have your foundation in order, bro, like it, it's, it's really null and void because they're going to be expecting you to, to live up to this expectation that you really can't live up to. You know what I'm saying? So just trying to, like I said, man, just trying to, trying to do it right, man. Keep the foundation strong and just keep building uh, upon what we have. Absolutely. So I'm going to take another quick break. And I want to I want to I want to talk about some of your favorite places to eat in Virginia real quick, because I know there's some new places that's just been, that's just popped up and I, I need to know the scoop. Can, can we 100%. Do it? Got you for sure. So we'll be right back on Black Parent Radio with Huey Melendez. Appreciate everybody tuning in live on another amazing episode of Black Print Radio. Big shouts out to Huey and the entire Perfect Play team for kicking it with us, showing love and spreading the movement that's moving that we have here on AMP. If you like what you heard on this week's preview, hear the entire episode as a printer tier patron. It unlocks you everything that we have to offer from bonus episodes, early episodes, and more, including everything that we have dropping next week. An early look at next week's episode of the Black Print bonus b-sides that you won't hear on any of our social platforms, the entire AMP library of all of our past episodes, 
and more. Come join the fun to close out the summer. Patreon.com forward slash Blackprint.